So I wanted to shine a light on this incredible documentary which has been recently released in the U.S. on DVD. It's called The Search for Wang Wang. And uh, it, it sounds like some kind of X-rated movie parody of some kind of search for Wang Wang. But it's a crazy movie about the uh, Filipino midget action sensation known as Wang Wang. The, the man, the myth, the legend. Wang, Wang Wang was this guy uh, in the uh, early 80s who who burst onto the international film scene primarily in two films, uh, For Your Height Only and The Impossible Kid, The Impossible Kid of Kung Fu, what have you. These were James Bond parodies, takeoffs, where this diminutive uh, Wang Wang character, he's named after a, a spicy drink, I believe, some kind of a... A uh, hot drink. His name is, is not uh, his. His real name is Ernesto de la Cruz. But Wang Wang is this. Uh, you know, plays the the secret agent, and he goes around shooting people and uh, tight. You know, walking a tightrope, jumping off things, jumping off buildings, doing all kinds of crazy stunts in these. Uh, you know, thr thrill a second. Uh, uh, Philippine films, Fil Filipino, uh, you know, action adventure films. I mean, over the world over, this the the Philippines is known as a as a center of of action films. And you know, in the seventies, Roger Corman and Eddie Romero came came along and and just started pumping out these action films. And so, the, a lot of people know about these, but Wang Wang is one of the, the strangest and most colorful of, I mean because he's just weird he's just like a he looks like a little a little doll but he's like a little he's like a little tiny human being and he's running around and he's jumping and he's and he and, and it looks like he's almost like sped up but it's but but I don't think most of the time he's sped up he's just moving so fast he was this little guy who learned kung fu and the the story of Wang Wang, the enigma of Wang Wang, because he he made these two films and then just disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him, where he where he came from, where he went. What, was he still alive? Was he dead? And this the, the enigma of Wang Wang fascinated this uh, Australian guy uh, Andrew Leivold, who was very well known as the owner of this uh, famous Australian video store which specialized in B-movie and horror and he would do all these B-movie and horror revival screenings throughout Australia. And so this guy in the early 2000s embarked on a quest, on a voyage to discover who this Wang Wang guy was, uh, you know, where he came from, where he went, what happened to him. And uh, the, the story is a, a, a very engaging, just a, the crazy story of Wang Wang. Wang Wang was just this guy who grew up in the Philippines in utter squalor, but he was like a miracle child, you know. Everyone around him talks about how he was just like, a, he, he, when he was born, he, apparently he was the size of a Coke can. And he was uh, incubated under a bare bulb in a little box, in like a shoe box, for six months. And, no, and, he, and he had to be fed with a, with, a, with a dropper, with a medicine dropper, and uh, with an eyedropper. And nobody knew if he would live or not, but he did live. And he's like, he was like in Philippines, he was almost seen as like the Santo Nino, the, the, the son, son, the Christ son, the little baby Christ. He was, he kind of took on that persona as like this almost good luck charm. And so when he was, again, he lived in squalor and then he was, uh, went to this, um, to this gym and they, they trained him in Kung Fu. They trained him in martial arts just to be kind of like a mascot for the gym. And then he was discovered by this husband and wife team, Cora and Peter Cabales. And they were uh, making these uh, films and he was cast in the films and suddenly one of these director guys or Cora Cabales, somebody said, hey, let's make a, 
let's make a, uh, a James Bond takeoff with this little guy, the joke of, you know, the, this little guy playing the James Bond takeoff. And so it, 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 it went from there. And, this, and, and the story of how all of this happens unfolds as we see this guy, Andrew Leveld, travel from Australia into the Philippines, meeting people, and he meets, and he goes to, like, the Filipino uh, film archives, and, because the Philippines, I, I didn't, I had no idea of this. I mean, I knew about the action films of the Philippines and everything, but the Philippines, at, at one point in the late 70s and early 80s, w was apparently a, 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 a center of film culture. They were making, at one point, the, over 300 films a year. So it was like every every week in and week out there were new f films. Apparently, under the the regime of the Marcos regime, that's what people did. It was a it was a film culture. People would wa would 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 watch movies every week and talk film and every and and like most most uh, most. Most kind of uh, countries that are not, you know, America, Europe, not the most big time, you know, f you know the, the films of that era are many, many times lost. They're like silent films. They're just gone, you know. Wang Wang himself uh, uh, acted in like about 14 movies. He starred in like seven of them. We only in the U.S. knew, or in, and even in Australia, knew about two of them, but he did another uh He's, his first double agent film was Agent Double O, which was even before For Your Height Only and The Impossible Kid, but apparently nobody's even seen that. He did a couple of westerns, he he had bit parts in, in these films, and a lot of that, that stuff, I mean, uh, there's a scene where Andrew uh, goes to the film archive in uh, in the Philippines, and he, see, and he has this video of a Wang Wang uh, western, and he's like taping it off a screen, and on the commentary track, uh, Andrew Levo talks about how he went back and tried to get the rights to, to, uh, uh, to actually uh, from to, um, um, to get a higher quality Betacam master of that uh, film, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't. The only real evidence that, that film even exists apparently is those few minutes uh, of. Uh, that he taped off of a screen at the archive. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe right now it's somewhere on YouTube. Because, you know, you can search on YouTube. I've seen tons of, of Wang Wang stuff. So, uh, you know, definitely if you if you want to get into Wang Wang, uh, you know, you definitely need to, to crawl around YouTube. But it was weird. I mean, Wang Wang for a time became... I mean, and there is this thing in the film, this tension that's never quite resolved about... Uh, uh, was Wang Wang a national treasure? Was he a national embarrassment? Because basically at the, uh, I believe the 1982 Manila Film Festival, which was this gigantic cultural event that was put on by the, by, uh, the Marcos regime to uh, welcome the international film community. They paid for, uh, you know, for the, for all these, you know, major Hollywood film stars to come and there was a lot, of, a lot of Italian filmmakers as well, uh, a lot of Italian actors like Fabio Testi and Franco Nero were, were all there. And the, the only film that seemed to get the excitement and sell internationally, the rights, were, were, was, was Wang Wang. Everybody wanted Wang Wang. Wang Wang was the, the star of this show and kind of apparently embarrassed a lot of, a lot of other people. So it's that whole underdog, that whole coming from nowhere and becoming the success, but then there's the, you know, there's the the price of fame, and and the, and we get into the dark side of of Wang Wang, and how Wang Wang was basically, you know, he was unofficially or officially, we don't know, adopted by these two people, these cabales, a husband and wife team who produced these films, who financed and produced these films, and then. Once they got out of filmmaking, apparently Cora Cabales went into uh, government, uh, some kind of political position, and then she moved to the United States, uh, and then Peter Cabales kind of disappeared with some money, became a playboy, and did what he wanted. Uh, you know, they, there is this figure thrown around of millions that, that, that these Wang Wang films made millions of of dollars, or at least a million, and uh, Wang Wang never saw any of that money. He was never paid properly. He was given like a, 
you know, a, a weekly or monthly allowance of like 10 or $20 and, and, uh, and once, once they broke up, once the, the Kabbalists broke up, uh, you know, in the, in the mid eighties, um, Wang Wang was sent back to live with his mother and his brother in the, the, the hut, the straw hut, uh, well, I mean the, the shack and it was, it was, it was more, it was more of a, like a bamboo like structure where he grew, where he was born. Uh, he spent his last years and, um, became sicker, had a stroke, lost control of his body. Um, and uh, died. It's a very, very sad story. But the 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 discovery of and the moving, you know, this this documentary is so moving. Where it's it's very rare in a film in a documentary where you where you just feel the passion that the that the filmmaker has for his subject matter and 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 the Andrew Andrew's passion for Wang Wang and for Filipino. Uh, B movie grindhouse cinema, it just comes through in this film, and it makes you want to want to immediately start watching some movies, start watching, you know, all these crazy movies, and watch the Wang Wang movies again because they're just uh, they're they're incredible films, and I I mean in a politically cor in the politically correct time that we're in right now, watching movies with you know, midgets and, uh, you know, maybe a little bit out of, um, out of fashion. And there is also the exploitation element with, uh, Wang Wang where he wasn't, there's the, there's the question of whether he was really treated fairly and treated right. And there's, there's actors who talk about how Wang, even though Wang Wang was smiling, you could, he, they, the actors could tell that Wang Wang was not, not a happy man, not a happy person. At the same time, you just get the feeling when he was doing these movies that he, for who knows how many moments, there was some joy, there was some happiness when he was just doing this stuff. And Wen Wang, unlike most Phil, he's not, he's like a tiny person, you know, and he's very fast and agile and one gets the feeling that this martial arts training and, and the rigorous activity of these these films doing incredible stunts uh, somehow maybe helped to elongate his life in a way I mean it was just like when that stopped I mean that's when I think he had the problem or you could argue that um, a lot of the stuff that he went through doing these films shortened his life because he didn't live a long life he died in 1992 um, because I don't know. It all it, it, it is the the I, I'm not a health expert, so I can't tell you about his specific makeup, what he was, uh, you know, as far as health and if that shortened or elongated his life. But I just can't I can't not watch these movies. I can't, I don't feel guilty about watching a Wang Wang movie. I can't take it as other than pure unadulterated joy and and just the and these films are are for what they are are very well made i mean the director of the the most of the wang wang films the the two biggest ones eddie was is eddie nikart and that was one of his the the filmmaker's big goals was to find eddie nikart and interview him and they did and the interviews with with eddie nikart where they taught where he shows him the 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 gear the, uh, the 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 stunt gear that it, that they use in the actual Wang Wang movies is incredible. Then the scene where Andrew meets the editor of the Wang Wang movies rather randomly uh, at the Filipino Film Archive is is cool. The whole movie is just really great. And uh, and then there is the whole scene where Andrew's like, "Screw it, I'm gonna go meet Imelda Marcos." And he does, and it's uh, it's it's wild, and it's cr it's as, just as wild, as crazy as you, you can imagine it. And uh, I'll just say that I'll I'll leave something to the imagination. But I, it's a great story, full of these great great characters, the directors and the actors behind the Filipino films. And uh, it seems like Philippine, it was mainly action and sex movies, which they made, it seems like. Probably some musicals. I'm sure there was some musicals going on there. I don't see, I don't see a lot of horror or, 
or um, sci-fi going on. It seemed like that was a little more high-end, and it seemed like it seemed like it was mainly the Italians coming in and doing the horror and sci-fi and shooting in the country. Uh, but in any case, oh, oh my God, oh my God, ooh, what what an incredible incredible documentary. It was released, I believe, in um, in Australia on a DVD, and then now it has been released in the U.S. by Wild Eye Releasing. It, first of all, it has a wonderful commentary by the director, Andrew Leavold, who, who, who almost gives you as much information about the film in the commentary as he, as he does in, in the main film. Again, another, another reason why uh, documentaries should, should have director commentaries, because the directors of documentaries in many ways, even unlike a, a real film, they know their subject matter front and back usually, and so it's really a joy to listen to some to someone with with as much passion uh, and knowledge of the subject matter as Andrew Leavold to make this film go one step further and then spill that passion over into like 90 minutes of just talking. I mean, toward the end of the of the commentary track, it's it's very emotionally breaks up where he talks about. Um, the, the his father passing away and what it meant to him before and he couldn't and he didn't see the movie and a ve very it, it feels like a, a guy full of emotion and heart and it's I'm really glad because I'm glad the movie came out because I thought the search for Wang Wang I, I I read about it in a message board in the early 2000s and then there was uh, apparently there was a thing where uh, Andrew got involved with ABC, uh, the Australian Broadcasting, and they decided to make this film, Machete Maidens Unleashed, which I thought was the end of Wang Wang. I thought that was going to be part of the Wang Wang movie, because I think there's a little bit of Wang Wang in it, but it's, to be honest, I, I think Andrew's film is, I mean, it's not a contest, but I think Andrew's film is like 50, 70, 80 times better than Machete Maidens Unleashed. I didn't quite like Machete Maidens at least. It, it seemed like an unbalanced film. It seemed like half the time it wanted to be an autobiography of like Ro of Roger Corman and Eddie Romero in, uh, in 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 a foreign country making movies. It didn't it didn't see, and, it, and it was just. But I mean, is this a movie about Filipino films? Is this a movie about Roger Corman? It was very much. It it didn't. It seemed to. Wang Wang is a very focused movie. It's about the, the, uh, this filmmaking force that, that arrived from, uh, you know, from Philippines, Wen Wang, and, uh, you know, around that, it, it uses to, it uses the story of Filipino uh, exploitation of B-movie film to just provide the, the foundation for Wen Wang, but you feel this film is very good, very focused, even when it gets on digressions like going and visiting Imelda Marcos or going here. Or go, it, it feels like you're, you're just giving a, a, a better and fuller picture of the, fil the, the, the circumstances under which these films were made. So it's, it's really, 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 really good. It also has some other little, little features. It's got um, extended interviews and some things like that, which are quite quite fun and I think the the Australian DVD has like a little soundtrack CD along with it I don't know I mean the to me the Wild Eye um, US Blu-ray uh, DVD uh, it's standard definition I don't think it's ever coming out on Blu-ray but the Wild Eye DVD the Wild Eye releasing DVD was pretty much superb excellent so Wang Wang Filipino action extraordinaire um, Great documentary. Even if, I don't think even if you, you don't know who Wang Wang is, if you love just in-depth documentaries about a guy just going whole hog on a on a subject and um, turning over all kinds of interesting stories and life uh, and culture. I mean, this if you, if you're just an overall documentary fan, this is a good movie to check out. So check it out, definitely.